Well, we all know this, but relationships are some of the most important parts of our lives. Researchers at Harvard have been studying relationships for almost a decade, including Dr. Robert Waldinger here. So we want you to tell us about the story. Thanks for coming on, or the study rather. It is the longest scientific study of happiness that has ever been conducted. How long exactly? 85 years. Wow. And what's unusual about it is that it's followed the same families for 85 years. The, we started with some Harvard undergrads, a very privileged group, but also some, of, some kids from Boston's poorest neighborhoods. And we followed all of them and brought in their spouses. And then we brought in almost all their kids. And we followed these families over decades to see how their lives develop and what keeps them happy and healthy. And you've had thousands of people included in this, including John F. Kennedy. So what exactly do you look at when you look at these families to sort of figure out uh, the happiness answer? Well, we look at health and we look at um, relationships and work. But the thing that we found that surprised us was that our relationships with other people keep us happier and they actually keep our bodies healthier as we go through life. That was something we didn't expect to find. Well, uh, was, was that really the key, relationships? Is that the key to happiness? Well, it's a big key. Yeah. It's, it's not everything, but it's a huge driver of happiness that we find that the people who have warmer connections and a better network of connections weather the storms of life better and they have more fun and they feel that life has more meaning. You have a new book out here called uh, The Good Life, uh, just about the study and what you've learned from it. And, and it's good news of what you found, that we, we can truly be happy. Yes, and one of the chapters in the book tells uh, the results of our study, which is that it's never too late. That some people feel like, oh, I'm not very good at relationships. That's never going to happen for me. And we had people in our study who found great friends for the first time in their 60s, who found love in their 70s and 80s when they didn't expect it. So it's a very hopeful message from studying all these lives over time. Are there some tips about the relationships? Because not all relationships are created equal. So did you learn something? Maybe you can give us some tips about that that's the most important part or the most positive part absolutely we talk about something we call social fitness like physical fitness it's something that we find we need to keep attending to and you can do that that actually if we pay attention to our relationships we can keep them strong uh, and build new ones and and it doesn't have to be anything big or momentous it can be like taking a moment to just send a text or an email or call someone on the phone and say, I've just been thinking of you, just wanted to say hi. And if you do those little things every day, every week, you will find you get amazing returns from people. Real quick before we go, anything that surprised you when, you, when you know, I know this was a very long study and you're the fourth director of this study, but anything that really surprised you about the study? What surprised us was that happiness didn't depend on wealth, it didn't depend on fame, it didn't depend on how much you achieved. That happiness was so much more dependent on whether you felt you had good connections with other people. Well, we're just happy you're here. Yeah. The happiness is contagious. Well, thank you for having me. All right. Well, the book, The Good Life, it looks so interesting. Lessons from the world's longest scientific study on happiness. Create a more meaningful and satisfying life. We all could read this book and learn something. Thank you so much. Thank you.